Island Weather Center Live. Winter Storm Lexi underway, currently in progress across the Northeast. It's putting more than 40 million under some type of winter weather alert. You are looking live right now at Boston on the top left, Hartford, Connecticut on the right, and the flakes are flying in New York City. A look at Rockefeller Center right here, and the snow is still coming down, but you notice the temperatures. Uh, right around freezing, just above in some areas, and we know that it can snow when the surface temperature is just above freezing. We're hoping that's going to help with the traffic, Paul, but not the case everywhere. Yeah, not everywhere. In fact, even out towards the eastern shore of Maryland, seeing some heavy snow come down. Let's kind of get you caught up on uh, where Winter Storm Lexi is causing the most trouble, and it's basically right here across the I-95 corridor and even into areas of uh, New Jersey, into Delaware as well. Philly's seen some snow, but again, the heavier snow well to the east of you as well. And let's talk about this because it definitely continues to be an issue for people this morning trying to get out and about. Schools already closed in the Boston area uh, because of winter storm Lexi, but we're seeing that rain snow line right there out towards the Cape and the islands where temperatures are still in the low 40s, but we're just above freezing here in Boston. And we do see the back edge of that snow now uh, trying to push on through Baltimore and uh, D.C. right now. Philly just seeing some cloud cover, but the Atlantic City area and the Jersey Shore still seeing some snow. And temperatures at Trenton at 33 degrees, just above freezing, but the snow is still falling. And there New York City is right at freezing and below. We're still seeing the snow come down. Also, the North Shore along Long Island, uh, some decent snow totals so far. I'll show you those coming up. But there it is. Martha's Vineyard now has dropped from 40 to 37 with some rain still at this hour, but Providence, Boston, just above freezing, the snow continues to come down and uh, definitely uh, making at least a looking like a snow globe across the area. Chris? And on Snowflake Patrol, we know in Boston today, we have Reagan Meji. She is standing by. She's been in it, and we want to find out what Reagan has been seeing. Good morning to you, Reagan. Looks like there's some big flakes coming down on you right now. It's kind of stinging your face a little bit. Yeah, more so they're getting caught in my eyelashes. So like I can't yes. see, like it's all in my eyelashes. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, you know it's like big chunky thick flakes when it's like in your eyelashes. I don't even have fake eyelashes on, but now I feel like I do. All right, enough of the eyelash talk, who cares? This is what we care about. This is Boston, everyone. Uh, check out the roadways and the walkways. Uh, the walkways getting covered with some slush and some snow. You look at the roadways. The Department of Transportation for Massachusetts has about 3,000 pieces of equipment on the roads throughout the state right now, making sure that the roads stay safe on this workday, weekday, Friday. The Boston Public School District closed today. Uh, Providence, Rhode Island, their schools closed as well. Uh, this ch had a changeover. It was rain throughout the morning. At 520 in the morning, it changed over to snow. Little by little, it gradually got bigger, thicker chunks of, of snow. Uh, but when we look at the snow, we have, you know, it's kind of a thicker snow. It's a heavier, almost slush. And then we look over here. I thought this was pretty cool. So I'm going to step in this. Check that out. You can see it's almost like a little slushy iceberg kind of thing. So uh, yeah, it just show, goes to show that the ground is getting cooler. Uh, we talked about the fact that the ground it had that yesterday was the the highest record breaking low temperature of 43 degrees. So it's been a warm ground for a really long time. And then of course, that's why you don't see that the snow is covering the ground. But as the day goes on, you know, it gets colder. Uh, so here's some old wives tale. And I and I try to say, explain this early in the morning. So when I grew up, there's this old wives tale that said, stick on stick, no stick, no stick on stick, stick, which means if the snow sticks on the stick, it's not sticking on the ground. If the snow sticks on the tree, stick on stick, no stick, no stick. If it doesn't stick on the tree, it will stick on the ground. See, I'm even confusing. So if it sticks on the tree, it won't stick on the ground. But if it doesn't stick on the tree, it will stick on the ground. Stick on stick, no stick. Stick on stick, stick. But I have to ask the meteorologist stick. back in Atlanta. I think I know where Atlanta, Do you know where this is going? agree with that old wives I, tale? I understand it. I can't still can't remember the stick on stick, no <laughs> Not stick, Not sure what stick, you stick, said, stick. But, but we think, I think the gist yes. of it is if it's, <laughs> if it's really cold, more likely to stick on the ground and, and not on the tree. Right, it's small, small branches that the snow's going to go right by. But, but when also, it's if it's cold long enough, the tree's cold enough, so it's not going to stick on the tree. But right, it's it going to because they're small. But if it's marginal, you have a little bit of water on the end of the snowflakes that act like glue, and that's what's going to hit the stick. Yeah. 
I think that's sticking. Is, is that, that's, that's I hope sticking? it's sticking with you at home. But we're not going to stick with Reagan. We'll check back with her <laughs> <laughs> next hour. But uh, let's bring in Dr. Postel and talk Dr. about Postel? this. I think because, again, it was so warm yesterday. Things like trees are warm enough, so they grab the snowflakes. I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. But, it, yeah, right, the temperatures are marginal, right, for uh, a lot of snow to stick on the warmer surfaces. That's pretty much it. So let's have a look at the radar because there are some places where it's snowing pretty hard. We have visibility about a quarter of a mile in heavy snow in Taunton. Uh, in Worcester, right out here, heavy snow. So, and also in parts of Connecticut, those darker shades of blue are showing us, the radar is telling us, confirmed with observations, that it is coming down pretty hard and accumulating on the grass probably perhaps an inch per hour. This is a cool way of looking at it where the rain snow line is because we normally look at correlation coefficient in the radar to tell us if there is debris flying around with tornado signatures. Well, we're not in a situation like that, but it can also tell you where the rain snow line is because when the shapes are nearly uniform, either snow or all rain, then they show up as red. But when there's a combination of snow and rain, it kind of shows up as yellow, meaning a combination of snow and rain. The rain snow line is right about there, progressively moving. Not much, actually. I think, if anything, it's going to slide eastward over the next few hours. But that's where the rain snow line is. So the Cape right now, mostly, if not all rain. We've seen some snow reports of two inches in places in parts of southeastern Massachusetts and Foxborough in particular, thanks to this potent low pressure system that is only slowly going to be moving northeastward. So we're going to be stuck in the snow, guys, for a few more hours across southeast New England. So hang tight. Wet snow accumulating certainly a lot on the uh, grass in some of the colder areas. What about the sticks? Sticks. Sticks uh, on stick on stick, but no stick on the ground. All right, we got that. We got that. We also <laughs> have some new video into the Weather Channel, and it's giving us some new insight to one tornado. We're gonna show you four angles, angles and show you the videos and what you might have missed in some of the videos. You show up, you stay up, <laughs> you listen, you laugh, you worry. You do whatever it takes to take care of your family. And when it's time to plan for your family's future, we're here for you. We're LegalZoom, and for over 10 years, we've helped families just like yours with wills and living trusts. So when you're ready, start with us. Doing the right thing has never been easier. LegalZoom, legal help is here. Your path to retirement may not always be clear, but at T. Rowe Price, we can help guide your retirement savings. So wherever your retirement journey takes you, we can help you reach your goals. Call us or your advisor. T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. I take Prilosec OTC each morning for my frequent heartburn. Because you can't beat. Zero heartburn. Ah, the sweet taste of it. Prilosec OTC. One pill each morning, 24 hours. Zero heartburn. Hail Caesar is a masterpiece, featuring an all-star cast. It's glamorous and hilarious. You sure he's the father? Yeah, yeah, absolutely he's the father. <laughs> Pretty sure. Hail Caesar, a Coen Brothers film, rated PG-13. Andrew. Rita. Sandy. Meet Chris. Jackie. Joe, minor damage or major disaster, when you need us most, we're there. State Farm, we're a force of nature too. Do you like to win? If we're going to set the standard, it's going to be my standard. It's go time. I'm certain that I will make you a millionaire. We have a deal? We have a deal. See what winning looks like. That's Thank the American you. dream, and that's exactly why we do this show. Every night on the all-new CNBC. Currently in our area, 60 degrees under cloudy skies. Today, chance of a morning shower. Partly cloudy and windy. High 66. Winds north at 20 to 30 miles per hour. Tonight, overcast. Slight chance of a rain shower. Low 62. 
Saturday, cloudy with occasional rain showers. High, 72. Chance of rain, 60%. Here's our seven-day outlook. Geeking out on what's happening in weather, how it happens, and why it's so freaking cool. Weather Underground, weeknights at 6 on the Weather Channel. Moved into this? Make it look like this. Let's check out our options. Give it some style. Perfect. Now, let's detail it. Let's put our ideas to work and step into a new favorite room. Let's do this. Buy Vanity's in-store and online today, starting at just 139 bucks. The Home Depot, more saving, more doing. At the Joseph A. Bank Super Saturday Sale, get 75% off all Joseph suits, sport coats, and blazers. Plus, get 50 to 70% off throughout the store. Only at Joseph A. Bank this Saturday, preview day Friday. Yeah. I called around for auto insurance quotes, and it seems like they're all the same. If you want a company that feels different the very first time you call, then try Amica. There has to be something better. Our whole company is dedicated to great customer service and helping you save money. For example, you can save up to 25% when you insure more than one car with Amica. Hey, why don't you call Amica? That's a great company. Yes, listen to that guy. Bicycle guy. Well, who haven't we tried yet? Amica. Call Amica now for your free, no obligation quote. Hey, check this out. This is video from Huntington, New York, which is out on the north shore of Long Island. This is from earlier this morning, and the side roads, as you can see, completely covered with snow from our latest winter storm, Winter Storm Lexi. And as of 7, they already picked up three inches of snow, and a winter storm warning remains in effect until this afternoon at 3. Let's take a look at that northeast forecast for you. This uh, time of the, the morning is when we show you the northeast forecast every hour until noon. And this is what we're seeing right now. All that blue is snow coming down. But you get over into the Cape uh, and you get into parts of Martha's Vineyard and Nantucket. Still in the rain, at least according to what the, the radar is showing us at this moment. But there is a back edge with just a few showers coming off of Lake Ontario. And through the day, here you go, afternoon, 3 p.m., Four, and still some lingering showers, possibly by the early evening commute in Boston, otherwise uh, drying out and uh, warming up a bit from New York down to Washington, D.C. Definitely more of a morning event here for the Mid-Atlantic. Better for you afternoon as well. But hey, not so much across the Northeast New England. Let's see how the weather uh, winter storm Lexi is affecting the roads in Connecticut. That's right, Kevin Ursick with the Connecticut Department of Transportation joining us now on the phone. Kevin, thank you for your time. I understand it's probably pretty busy for you this morning. Can you give us an idea how the roads are? Sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, anytime we have a storm that rolls in during a morning commute, we're always, you know, biting our nails. Uh, high traffic volumes, folks rushing to work, that's never a good combination when you add slippery conditions. So um, things have gone pretty smoothly this morning, um, but uh, there's no question right now in particular, the roads in the state are starting to deteriorate quickly. It's really coming down, uh, mainly, well, more so eastern Connecticut, but uh, the entire state has seen a lot of snow right now, and the road conditions are deteriorating, uh, becoming uh, very slick, what I like to call greasy. It's a heavy, wet snow, very greasy, very slippery conditions. And Kevin, we know the snow will linger into the afternoon. Any advice for people uh, thinking about planning their evening commute home? Well, the evening commute should not be a problem. The storm's going to end, uh, you know, afternoon, 1 o'clock or so. That gives us plenty of time to do all of the clearing necessary uh, to get the roads back down to bare wet asphalt. Uh, so the afternoon commute is going to be fine. It's the remainder of the morning commute here that we're worried about. Um, if folks don't need to be out there on the roads, that's a good thing. Uh, don't travel if you don't have to. If you do have to be on the roads, you've really got to take it slow, and you've got to make sure you've got a vehicle that's equipped for winter weather. Otherwise, you may have uh, trouble getting around. Kevin, from a DOT perspective, is there a wild card while the snow's going on or, or sort of what makes you nervous in an event like this? It's always the timing, right? So, so timing is everything when it comes to winter weather. Um, if you have a quarter inch of snow, a half inch of snow during a morning or afternoon rush, that can really, really turn into a big problem versus, say, a snowstorm overnight or a snowstorm on the weekends. Um, and I think one of the biggest issues is 
just the reality that, hey, we're all trying to get to work. We're in a rush. We don't want to be late. Um, when, you, when you mix that in with slippery conditions, it's, it's never a good scenario. So that's always the wild card with the storms. It's always the timing. You know, we'll take a blizzard on the weekend versus uh, a morning or afternoon commute storm during the week. Now let's talk about that last blizzard, uh, Kevin. How are, you, uh, areas, how are people in your area dealing with this snow event versus the last much bigger, more impactful snow event? Well, I think I think we're just starting to get folks kind of changing gears, so to speak, in getting into that winter weather driving mentality, and that's something that we've been kind of delayed on this year. You know, the first couple of storms, we're always worried because folks are not used to driving in the snow, um, and we haven't had much of a winter this season, uh, and I don't know that folks have made that uh, change, that, that switch has been flicked to get them into winter weather weather driving mindset. So um, things are moving forward here. We're doing pretty good at this point. All right, Kevin Nursig with the Connecticut Department of Transportation. Thank you. And we're going to talk about how much more winter in the coming days we can expect in the Northeast, plus some brand new tornado video into the Weather Channel. You know, some people think reverse mortgages sound too good to be true. I mean, you get cash out of your home, no monthly payments, and you still own your home. You'd think there has to be a catch, right? Well, there isn't. It's like any other mortgage, only with a reverse mortgage, the loan's paid back when the last borrower leaves the home. In fact, reverse mortgages are based on a notion that President Reagan signed into law over 25 years ago in order to help seniors remain in their homes. If you're 62 or older and own your own home, you may qualify for a government-insured reverse mortgage with AAG that allows you to turn the equity in your home into tax-free cash. Call 1-800-981-6380 now to receive receive a new free information kit, including reverse mortgage guide and DVD, personal stories from people like you, and a brand new family guide for children and loved ones, all absolutely free with no obligation. AAG can help you eliminate monthly mortgage payments, pay off credit card debt or other bills, and provide some real retirement security. Call 1-800-981-6380 today to get your free AAG reverse mortgage information kit and bonus DVD. In the kit, you'll receive a helpful three-part guide. The first will show you how a government-insured reverse mortgage allows you to access the equity in your home as tax-free cash. Half a million people have already done it. The second booklet contains stories by people just like you who have had their lives changed forever. And the third guide is full of helpful answers and information for children and loved ones. Call 1-800-981-6380 now to receive your information kit and DVD all absolutely free. It's simply an effective way for folks just like you to get the cash you need to enjoy your retirement. Find out why a reverse mortgage could be the retirement solution you're looking for. Call 1-800-981-6380 now to receive your information kit and DVD all absolutely free. Call 1-800-981-6380 now. AAG, the best advice for a better life. We know you have a morning routine. We have one too. Seven days a week, AMHQ is right here and weather ready with Jim Cantori, Stephanie Abrams, Jen Carfagno, and the rest of AMHQ. Let's get right to what you want, and that is the weather. AMHQ, every morning. There's a big difference between retirement and a secure retirement. Well, you may be standing right in front of the difference between uncertainty and knowing that everything's going to be all right. It's your home. Turning your home's equity into cash when you need it is a simple way to eliminate your existing monthly mortgage payments, pay off debt, and get you and your family the financial resources you need. If you're 62 or older and own your own home, you make... Fishermen don't wake up thinking about yesterday's failures. They wake up smelling today's possibilities. It's a new day, and everyone's looking for the first catch. Wicked Tuna. New episodes land Mondays at 9 on the National Geographic Channel. Sponsored by Tire Kingdom Service Centers. Tires, oil, service, and repairs. That's all you need. 57842 today. We're geeking out on what's happening in weather, how it happens, and why it's so freaking cool. Weather Underground. Weeknights at 6 on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 60 degrees under mostly cloudy skies.
today, chance of a morning shower. Windy with a mix of clouds and sun. High 66. Winds north at 20 to 30 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy, slight chance of a rain shower. Low 62. Saturday, cloudy with occasional rain showers. High 72. Chance of rain 60%. Here's our seven-day outlook. Right now on the Weather Channel, showing you some brand new video into the Weather Channel from earlier this week. It's a tornado as it was hitting a high school in Crockett County in Tennessee. Again, this was on Tuesday. Turns out this was an EF1 tornado with wind speeds estimated at 95 miles per hour. Its path nearly three miles long. And you can see four different vantage points at the same area, at the same school. Several buildings at Crockett County High School were damaged. And you can see some of that damage flying around. You can see some of the, the parking signs perhaps bent over by some of the damage, maybe parts of a siding or a roof. A lot going on here. So this is one of those videos. Look at that. Look at it just twists the metal and then picks it up and pushes it. But here comes a chair. Let's you know there's a school nearby, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, amazing pictures there of uh, all that damage. That was from Tuesday. And now we're talking about Friday. And now, Chris, we're talking about uh, a little snow, a little wind as well, but not severe thunderstorm related or even tornadoes as well. But still, it's amazing to and see the power of that. We have Dr. Greg Postel uh, casually watching this video right now intently. And I'm curious what's going through his mind right now. Probably uh, crickets or squirrels. I don't know. Greg, come join us. Are you can stay there, Greg. We just, uh, just want to hear from you. I saw you. I saw you were watching it. I was. You're also. Yeah. I mean, you're watching the models and you're watching that. You're you're multitasking. I'm just wondering about the, the you know, how how do you get the uh, the precision on the wind speed estimation, which is uh, pretty interesting. I always find that. Very problematic. I mean, you can look at the damage and estimate, which is what they do, and they do a pretty good job of that when they go in, in this forensic way of looking at the tornadoes and it's uh, the damage that it's done. But I would say, you know, how fast are those winds? It's too hard to tell. But the good thing is, is that there wasn't a lot of structural damage. So what you're saying is, you know, the estimated winds stronger than 90 miles an hour. Maybe not right here is kind of yeah. like what you were saying, kind of a skeptical mind. But yeah. the tornado itself, maybe yes. before it hit the school or mm -hmm. after, produced some damage. The National Weather Service says, and that's how you do it. There's no anemometers there out here right? getting it. You have to look at the damage, and based on a previous uh, past storms and how what winds do to different structures, you know how strong the winds were. Greg, yeah. you know if the Weather Service now relies on things like this surveillance video to you know to determine the strength and damage potential or what the, how strong these tornadoes were because I mean it seems like you can't go anywhere unless you're on one or maybe a dozen cameras <laughs> as a heads up to people you know <laughs> be on your best behavior I don't know if they do or not officially no I don't know but that that's a good point maybe they should yeah Definitely could be a tool to, to help yeah, determine uh, how strong that storm was, or even if it was a tornado and, or straight line winds. And let's not forget, that these winds are going in so many different locations at so many different scales, and you have stuff flying everywhere. It's so erratic. It's such a mess to pinpoint which part had the strongest winds. Nearly impossible. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. But I still think, uh, give it a couple of years, there'll be some kid out there who'll have some anorhythm or somehow some equation to determine based on based video, on video and how, how fast some debris how goes long by. that sidewalk is yeah it's it's coming like we were heads at Paul. they used Trust to me. do that actually ted Fujita did that photogrammetry analysis of like how fast particles were flying through the sky to estimate the wind speeds and tornadoes so hmm. there is a template if that's to be done uh from many a generation ago so yeah it's there I've, it's coming let's look mm -hmm. for some papers and some science journals coming soon <laughs> yeah i think so all right let's talk about what's going on right now because we're concerned about this coming weekend's storm. It should not be on the severe side, but definitely uh, take a look at Wilmington here. We got rain coming in tomorrow night. Look at the temperatures. About marginal. We could even see a couple of wet snowflakes, but not really. Uh, Sunday, more rain for there for you, but then also Sunday night, temperatures uh, start cooling down again as we have yet another storm system on the way, on its making here across the coastal section of the Carolinas. Again, it's February, so yes, cold air happens, especially this time of the year. And I know it's been kind of a slow start to the cold season. Well, it's here and it's sticking around. That's crucial because our next low will help develop in this cold air and that will potentially start giving us more snow across the mid-Atlantic and the northeast New England, but the coastal section some rain, but then into Monday and Tuesday could see more snow for New England. More details coming up. If you could see your cough. It's just a cough. 
years. You'd see how often you cough all day, and so would everyone else. New Robitussin 12 Hour delivers fast, powerful cough relief that lasts up to 12 hours. New Robitussin 12 Hour Cough Relief because it's never just a cough. Pure is big, bold, and just better. Pure is McCormick. The smallest pinch of Pure McCormick can make meals legendary. We want to help you realize the rich taste that Pure can bring because Pure tastes better. Savings are in season at Men's Warehouse. Right now, save up to 70% on winter clearance items, from suits to dress shirts to outerwear and more. Plus, buy one, get one free on additional favorites. Men's Warehouse. Follow your style. When I lay in my tempur contour, then I slowly feel it start to kind of wrap itself around me. And the next thing I know, it's morning. With Temperflex, you've got the spring and bounce of a traditional mattress. Then it also adjusts to my body. My cloud feels so comfortable. It feels like somebody's hugging you. How can a bed do that? <laughs> There's a tempur for everyone. Find the feel that's right for you. And now, through February 28th, save up to $300 on one of our most popular Tempur-Breeze mattress sets. The challenges facing the country never stop. So neither does the U.S. Army. We train, adapt, and get smarter. Every soldier, every unit, every day. Not to keep up with change, but to drive it. Nobody knows what problems tomorrow will bring. But we do know who will solve them. Check this out, bro. What's that, bro, Heem? I switched to GEICO and got more. More savings on car insurance? Yeah, professor, and more, like renter's insurance. More ways to save. Nice, bro tata chip. That's not all protein shake. GEICO has motorcycle and RV insurance, too. Ooh, that's a lot more. Oh, yeah. I'm all about more Teddy Roosevelt. GEICO. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. I'm Andy, and I lost 30 pounds on Nutrisystem. Listen up, guys. Want to shed a few pounds? Got a beer belly going on? Can't fit into your pants? I got one word for you. Nutrisystem. I'm Essex, and I lost 43 pounds on Nutrisystem. I'm Trevor, and I lost 60 pounds on Nutrisystem. Lose weight fast with Nutrisystem's all-new Turbo 10. You can lose weight, too. Real guys, real results. I'm Michael, and I lost 50 pounds on Nutrisystem. Put down the pie, pick up the phone, and get with the program today. Lose up to 10 pounds in your first month and five inches overall you'll love it money back guarantee the food was delicious if you're like me and you like to eat this is what you get to do this is perfect for men especially guys who don't want to cook so get off the couch and order your 28 day nutrisystem plan right now get one week of all new turbo shakes free and one week of nutri crush shakes free it's not that hard you eat the food you lose the weight call 877-580-THIN and get the all new turbo 10 with 14 shakes free what makes me a weather geek? That's a great question. Owning like five weather stations at my house, and then I name them. Who does that? I have a weather station in the backyard so I can check the dew point, which is my favorite. I am a nerd. I'm nerdy and proud. I'm proud to be a weather geek, but I'm addicted. I'm addicted to the weather. Currently in our area, 60 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, chance of a morning shower. Windy with a mix of clouds and sun. High 66. Winds north at 20 to 30 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy, slight chance of a rain shower. Low 62. Saturday, cloudy with occasional rain showers. High 72. Chance of rain 60%. Here's our seven day outlook. Closed captioning brought to you by Belltone, your premier hearing care partner. Belltone is conducting a new trial on innovative hearing technology. You will be asked to evaluate a remarkable product that's virtually invisible. Call 1 800 Belltone. Right now, more than 15 million people are under some sort of a winter weather alert. 
Now in Denver, this is what they're doing this morning. Plowing seven to eight inches of powder. Boy, that's beautiful. We are talking a half an inch of accumulation. I'm in LA, again, Los Angeles. But I'm telling you guys, uh, the difference between 31 degrees and snowing or 30 degrees and heavy snow and 28, 27 degrees and heavy snow with it blowing even harder is huge. If we take a you know, look on a very large scale, the radar is showing that this is just going to continue. Yeah, heard it's gonna be a big one. Come on, yes! We ain't going nowhere. It's me. Hello, I just be out here. Wow, that was just this week. We yeah. know <laughs> blizzard going on. We had uh, flooding. We had tornadoes. Uh, severe weather and, and, and Groundhog Day. And then Groundhog Day on top of that. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty wild. Hey, then thanks for staying with us for Weather Center Live. I'm Paul Goodlow. And I'm Chris Warren. Dr. Greg Postel is here and meteorologist Jessica Arnoldy keeping an eye on the developing situation we're watching in the Northeast as far as the snow goes. But we also, guys, want to get right to some breaking news. Yeah, in fact, it's kind of shocking news out of New York City right now with live breaking news of a crane collapse in the financial district in lower Manhattan. Unfortunately, one person has been killed and about a dozen people injured this morning. A uh, truck or tower crane collapsed, hitting a couple of buildings as it fell and crashed the street damaging some cars as well. Now, is weather a factor in this? Well, yet to be determined, but definitely some light snow falling in the area. Winds uh, gusting 20 to 22 miles per hour at the surface. Now, aloft, some of the radar estimates is the winds gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour at 1,000 feet. Uh, so, again, it could have played a factor right now, but we're still trying to piece all this together. And again, we don't know exactly all of the details to the circumstances of this, but we do know that the winds, again, as you mentioned, the surface 20 estimated higher up, more like 40 miles an hour. Uh, but from a meteorological standpoint, Paul, we know you get into a city, and yep. you know if you turn a corner, it can go from calm wind to, to really strong winds. There's local effects that may have also been a factor. Right, you have those narrow kind of canyons, they call them there. Think about having a garden hose, the water's coming out without a nozzle, and you put your thumb on it. You kind of shut down the space in that, uh, the opening of the hose, the water shoots out a lot faster. Water's a fluid, air is a fluid. Same thing happens there when you kind of push that wind through the, the narrow canyons between some of these buildings. You can see much stronger winds uh, with the general right. flow might be 10 and to 20 miles per hour. Again, we'll wait to, to hear the official investigation right. results, but just want to let you know that it may be a lot more complicated than it may first seem just looking at a few observations. Yeah, and again, you see there in the video, the streets are wet, there is some snow on the ground. Let's talk more about our current conditions because we're still dealing with uh, our winter storm, latest winter storm. They, they, it's the 12th name one, Winter Storm Lexi, going on right now. All right, so let's take a look uh, at all the snow that uh, has come down already just in the past 24 hours. Dr. Greg Postel mm -hmm. is here, and we're looking at some areas already four inches. We've had reports, you know, in that ballpark. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to see how this has developed uh, just in the, the the past day or two, the forecast for this. Well, we started talking about it yesterday morning, remember, that there was a chance for some significant accumulating snow across eastern New England. And we gave the probabilities of there being, for example, more than six inches of snow. And those were sizable, those probabilities. So, you know, it came late in the game, this uh, snow event, but I think 24 hours notice was pretty... Uh, Pretty clear. I mean, the Weather Service issued the winter storm watches yesterday morning, and then they had the warnings out yesterday that afternoon. afternoon. Yeah. yeah. So, so they it, did a good job. Yeah, did a great job. And here it is. I mean, still in the rain for uh, part, parts of Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, and the Cape. Otherwise, there's some heavy snow in there, <laughs> some of that darker blue. Yeah, visibilities in those darker blue areas are underneath a quarter of a mile, accumulating perhaps as much as an inch per hour on those surfaces that will receive that snow. Some of the roads are wet, so sometimes the snow is melting on the warmer surfaces. But uh, look at some of these places, Hartford, Springfield, Worcester even reporting some heavy snow. Still to come, we're looking at another potentially five to eight inches and still waiting for that change over there in the Cape as well. Yeah, that's going to take, might take a little while.
All right, we'll see if that happens. Yeah. Uh, but for now, Paul. Yeah, about an hour from Cape Cod, we got Boston. Boston right now still dealing with some snow coming down with the winter storm. Lexi, our Reagan Meji is there following the storm from that area. And Reagan, me and Chris went on for like the last 25 minutes talking about <laughs> your, your stick, stick, no stick. <laughs> Oh, no stick on sticks. Mortifying. Stick. That's the worst. Yeah, but we, we enjoyed it. It's a great yes. debate here, but okay. I think it has to do with the, the temperature of the ground and the tree. And apparently the ground is warm enough where the snow around you generally is melting on the roads, but uh, not so much on the trees and grassy surfaces. Yeah, so basically, yeah, stick on stick, snow stick on stick, no snow stick on the ground. No snow on stick, stick on the ground. Right. Whatever. I'll post it to my Facebook. I'm done talking about sticks. Let's stick to the script. And let's look at the no sticking on the ground. Okay, let's look at the ground right now. You can look at the roads right here in Boston. We're in Copley Square. You can see that's the on-ramp to Interstate 90 West heading towards New York and Mass Pike. Uh, they're really wet right now. The crews have been doing a great job. The road crews, there are about 3,000 of them throughout the state of Massachusetts trying to spread the salt, making sure it's not a slick commute through the day because mommy and daddy and our big brothers and sisters who work have to be working today. Uh, the kids here in the Boston Public School District, they're not working. They're not going to school. School's closed. Uh, but what kind of snow is this? Boom, let's look down at the ground. Okay, so we look at the snow. We call this heart attack snow. It's kind of heavier snow. And check this out. Really, really good packing snow, but it's heavy. So the potential for power outages is high uh, once the snow starts accumulating on the power lines and the trees and the branches. Or like we like to say here, the sticks. Back to you guys. <laughs> All right. We're sticking with your story there. Thanks, Reagan Meji from uh, Copley Square there in Boston. But again, uh, Lexi's on the way out. But eventually we have another storm that could be bringing snow to the same areas. Talk more about the next storm there. It tells you things are active when we're in the middle of a storm yeah. right now. But a heads up to the potential of another one. Uh, there's tri there's <coughs> some tricks in this. Yeah, this is a t tough one. <laughs> there's some tricks in the forecast that uh, we have to pay close attention to because just like the one that's ongoing now across eastern New England, two days ago or three days ago, didn't really show up so well in the models, giving you an idea of how deficient the models can be. Uh, there's another situation that may be similar coming on Monday. A storm system much more powerful than the one we're dealing with now will likely be offshore enough to spare New England some significant snow. But I wanted to alert you that there could be some accumulating snow on Monday in the eastern sections like that. But again, keep an eye on the model trends. If that moves a little bit west in future forecasts, that changes the game. So we have to pay close attention to it. Which the game changed yesterday did. for what's happening today. Got to stay tuned. And uh, this is, uh, again, a challenge for numerical weather prediction. It's not a knock on the models. It's the state of the science. If you think you're certain, uh, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be. There's just no. <laughs> numerical weather prediction, weather forecasting is built on uncertainty. And we have to communicate that. So let's look at Monday. And we've got kind of unsettled weather, not just in the Northeast, but also <laughs> across parts of the Ohio Valley, Chris. Look at that. Yeah, so I mean, you see one go right there, and then there's one lingering around here, then another one offshore. There's a lot going on. Yeah, there's a lot going on. And overall, lots of little areas of low pressure. It's like playing whack-a-mole. One d disappears in one place and then pops up somewhere else. Sort of an unsettled snowy pattern is moving into the northeast quarter of the U.S. All right, a lot to talk about. We're going to go back to the northeast and talk about where we see the worst of it. Currently in our area, 61 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, chance of a morning shower. Windy with a mix of clouds and sun. High 66. Winds north at 20 to 30 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy, slight chance of a rain shower. Low 62. Saturday, cloudy with occasional rain showers. High 72. Chance of rain 60%. Here's our seven day outlook. I smoked a lot and quit a lot, but ended up nowhere.
Now I use this. The Nicoderm CQ patch with unique extended release technology helps prevent the urge to smoke all day. I want this time to be my last time. That's why I choose Nicoderm CQ. It takes a lot of work to run this business, but I really love it. I'm on the move all day long. And sometimes, I just don't eat the way I should. So I drink Boost to get the nutrition that I'm missing. Boost Complete Nutritional Drink has 26 essential vitamins and minerals, including calcium and vitamin D to support strong bones, and 10 grams of protein to help maintain muscle, all with a great taste. I don't plan on slowing down anytime soon. Stay strong, stay active with Boost. I am never getting married. Never. Guaranteed. It picked a beautiful ring. Thank you. We're never having kids. <laughs> Hello, the air. We are never moving to the suburbs. We are never getting one of those. We are never having another kid. I'm pregnant. I'm never letting go. For all the nevers in life, State Farm is there. Moved into this? Make it look like this. Let's check out our options. Give it some style. Perfect. Now, let's detail it. Let's put our ideas to work and step into a new favorite room. Let's do this. Buy vanities in-store and online today, starting at just 139 bucks. The Home Depot. More saving. More doing. Across America, people are taking charge of their type 2 diabetes with non-insulin Victoza. For a while, I took a pill to lower my blood sugar, but it didn't get me to my goal. So I asked my doctor about Victoza. He said Victoza works differently than pills and comes in a pen. Victoza is proven to lower blood sugar and A1C. It's taken once a day, anytime. Victoza is not for weight loss, but it may help you lose some weight. Victoza is an injectable prescription medicine that may improve blood sugar in adults with type 2 diabetes when used with diet and exercise. It is not recommended as the first medication to treat diabetes and should not be used in people with type 1 diabetes or diabetic ketoacidosis. Victoza has not been studied with mealtime insulin. Victoza is not insulin. Do not take Victoza if you have a personal or family history of medullary thyroid cancer, multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2, or if you are allergic to Victoza or any of its ingredients. Symptoms of a serious allergic reaction may include itching, rash, or difficulty breathing. Tell your doctor if you get a lump or swelling in your neck. Serious side effects may happen in people who take Victoza, including inflammation of the pancreas, pancreatitis. Stop taking Victoza and call your doctor right away if you have signs of pancreatitis, such as severe pain that will not go away in your abdomen or from your abdomen to your back, with or without vomiting. Tell your doctor about all the medicines you take and if you have any medical conditions. Taking Victoza with a sulfonylurea or insulin may cause low blood sugar. The most common side effects are headache, nausea, diarrhea, and vomiting. Side effects can lead to dehydration, which may cause kidney problems. If your pill isn't giving you the control you need, ask your doctor about non-insulin Victoza. It's covered by most health plans. Right now on Weather Center Live, we're going to talk about the West and a phenomenon that can lead to some horrible weather, some bad circumstances, but it's not a guarantee. And it can happen any time of the year. In fact, we just had snow a couple of days ago in the higher elevations around LA, and now we're dealing with the Santa Ana. And that's definitely gonna um, push our temperatures sky high as well. So let's open up the lab floor and kind of talk about what the Santa Ana is and where it develops in SoCal. Yeah, so essentially, and a lot of times you think of this in, in the fall, but you, what happens is, is you get uh, high pressure inland, relatively low pressure offshore, and so you get the air going from high to low. And what happens is when it goes from inland at higher elevations as well, that air, when it goes downhill, it does a couple of things. First, it sinks, and the, the process of sinking air is compressing, and that's a warming factor. So your air is going to get warmer as it moves closer to the coast. It's also drying out as well, and it kind of gets squeezed through some of the canyons as it goes downhill into the lowlands across the LA basin. So you have these strong gusty winds coming through. They're dry as well, and it doesn't take much of a spark to potentially start huge fires. So if you're a firefighter, you don't want to hear Santa Ana's because it does three things that you don't want. Yeah. Makes it warmer, 
makes it drier, and winds can be faster. Yeah. And again, especially in a drought, a long-term drought, four years long, that is not something that uh, is welcome at all across that part of the country. For some perspective now in the West, let's go to our friend, KNBC meteorologist Crystal Egger. And good morning to you, Crystal. Good morning, you guys. First of all, I need that augmented reality, Santa <laughs> Ana. It, that was so cool. I mean, you guys nailed it. That's exactly what uh, Santa Ana's do. We're celebrating National Weather Person Day with those notorious winds coming back to Southern California. So you know we're going to be heating up. We're taking a big fat break from any rain or snow here in our state. We have wind advisories out for Southern California. That's where you get the Santa Ana's right here coming over the L.A. County, Riverside and San Bernardino Mountains. So this is where the warmest air will be over the weekend. We also, to add to that, you guys, we have high surf. Surf is up. You know, a lot of people are going to be going to the beaches. And a lot of people visiting, of course, around the Bay Area for Super Bowl. And they may not be familiar with the power of the Pacific when we get these wave heights. So waves will be about 15 feet in some areas. I mean, it's not necessarily a day where people are going to be laying on the beaches in San Francisco. It's more, you know, rocky. If you've ever been there, out on the rocks and jetties, that's where you have to be careful. Never turn your back to the ocean. Those waves can come up and take you by surprise. Also, uh, Paul and I both lived in Central California, and we can tell you, mm -hmm. jumping in the water Oof. in Central and Northern <laughs> California, it's not like going to Myrtle Beach. No, especially this time of year, you guys. And that's why the guys will be in full suits surfing with the booties and everything and the chilly water out there. But surfers will be out. I've seen them uh, out here this morning in Southern California already. Look at this amplitude, uh, amplified ridge. I mean, this is about as strong as it gets this time of year, a blocking ridge. We're not gonna get any cool air in here. We're going to keep warming up. We know it's warm for the Super Bowl. And then our temperatures in Southern California will be in record territory, especially early next week when we climb into the 80s. Sunday, we're at 84. And What's very typical also, uh, Paul and Chris, is once the winds settle, then our temperatures start to peak. So we're going to see this heat last through early next week. All right, thanks. That's our friend Crystal Egger joining us from mm -hmm. KNBC TV there in Los Angeles. She mentioned that the Super Bowl yeah. could be in the mid 70s. And again, if they could pick a day right. in February <laughs> in an El Nino year to have a Super Bowl, Sunday is it. And for the fans, I mean, come on, this is perfect. Yeah. And for most of the week to be so great, I've been watching any of the coverage, but every shot just seems picture perfect. Yeah, there's the forecast there. Temperatures in the low 70s, mid 70s at the start of the game, and then falling off to the very comfortable 60s. So weather should not be an issue. Even the wind pretty light as we head through the afternoon and evening hours. All right, coming up, some new video of a tornado that hit Tennessee earlier this week. Yeah, see the impacts from four different vantage points, along with some analysis from Dr. Greg Postel. It's coming up right after your local on the 8th. What makes me a weather geek? That's a great question. I love the weather. That makes me a weather geek. I'll talk about the weather whether I'm at work or not. Owning like five weather stations at my house and then I name them. Who does that? I have a weather station in the backyard so I can check the dew point which is my favorite weather piece of data. I am a nerd. I'm nerdy and proud. Can I go off about dew points? <laughs> I'm proud to be a weather geek. But I'm addicted. I'm addicted to the weather. Would that it was the same. Would that it was. Just, just, just keep still. From Joel and Ethan Cohen, creators of The Big Lebowski, Fargo, and True Grit, comes the most entertaining. Good stuff. Damn it! All star movie of the year. <laughs> still laughing. <laughs> but seriously. Hail Caesar. Rated PG 13. At the Joseph A. Banks Super Saturday Sale, get 75% off all Joseph suits, sport coats, and blazers. Plus, get 50 to 70% off throughout the store. Only at Joseph A. Bank this Saturday, preview day Friday.
Currently in our area, 61 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, chance of a morning shower. Windy with a mix of clouds and sun. High 66. Winds north at 20 to 30 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy, slight chance of a rain shower. Low 62. Saturday, cloudy with occasional rain showers. High 72. Chance of rain 60%. Here's our seven day outlook. A heart attack doesn't care if you run every day or if you're young or old. No matter who you are, a heart attack can happen without warning. If you've had a heart attack, a Bayer Aspirin Regimen can help prevent another one. Be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an Aspirin Regimen. Bayer Aspirin. I've been a poor man and I've been a king. I've had my life and the world on a string. I've traveled many roads, but I'm so far from done. running to the bathroom because your bladder is calling the shots? You may have OAB. Enough of this. We're going to the doctor. Take charge and ask your doctor about Mirbetric. That's Mirbetric, the first and only treatment in its class for OAB symptoms of urgency, frequency, and leakage. Mirbetric Mirbegron may increase blood pressure. Tell your doctor right away if you have trouble emptying your bladder or have a weak urine stream. Mirbetric may cause serious allergic reactions. If you experience swelling of the face, lips, throat, or tongue, or difficulty breathing, stop taking Mirbetric until your doctor right away. Mirbetric may affect or be affected by other medications. Before taking Mirbetric, tell your doctor if you have liver or kidney problems. Common side effects include increased blood pressure, common cold symptoms, urinary tract infection, and headache. It's time for you to make the calls, so call your doctor to see if Mirbetric may be right. At Seaside Palm Beach, we recognize that you may have other obligations in your life. When you're here, you'll be able to bring your laptop. We encourage you to bring your phone. We don't want you disconnected from the rest of the world where other treatment centers will not allow you to have these things. We know that you have a life, but we're gonna help you live that life better than when you came here. Your transition from chemically dependent to chemical free will be as painless as possible. Seaside, Palm Beach, please come see us. The conference call, the ultimate arena for business. Hour after hour of diving deep, touching base and putting ducks in rows. The only problem with conference calls, eventually they have to end. Unless you have the Comcast Business Voice mobile app. It lets you switch seamlessly from your desk phone to your mobile with no interruptions. I've never felt so alive. Make your business phone mobile with voice mobility. Comcast Business. Built for business. 7243-6587. Call now. We're geeking out on what's happening in weather, how it happens, and why it's so freaking cool. Weather Underground, weeknights at 6 on the Weather Channel. Breaking right now, a crane collapse in the financial district in lower Manhattan. What we do know right now as we are looking just moments ago at just a small portion of that crane and emergency crews on the scene, we do know one person confirmed dead. About a dozen other people injured in this. We know that uh, a truck or train or truck tower, we understand is what it's called, the crane portion collapsed, hitting a couple of buildings as it fell and then crashing. Look at the, the extent of this. And this is only a part uh, of the, the large crane that we're talking about here. Now, this is a live look. You can see the snow's coming down. Also, wind in the area at the time, light snow in the area, winds gusting to uh, and the northern part of the island, 20 to 22 miles an hour. But uh, Jessica Arnold, you've been looking here at, uh, you were on the Weather Underground site looking right. at 
personal stations, a little bit closer to where the actual crane came down. And you were saying, what did you see? Max uh, gust speed at 37 at the uh, weather station in Lower Manhattan. So, so a few blocks away from this, anywhere yeah. from a couple to several, but a lot closer than the official weather Correct. observation spot for Manhattan, which is in Central Park. So again, in the financial district. Uh, so what you're looking at, you can see where it says New York City there on the map on the right. The actual crane collapse was much farther south, almost the very bottom of the map there on the island of Manhattan. So you have some of the stronger ones. Something else to note, the, the wind observations uh, that we are getting are at the surface, right? So the main right. part of the crane that may be absorbing the wind would have been much higher up. And this is a pretty huge crane here. Again, this video doesn't really show the, the, the magnitude of how big this structure was. A good chunk of it came down and just smashing the tops of cars, a whole line of cars. But again, this crane goes well to the left of your picture and also well to the right of the picture. This is along Worth Street between uh, Broadway and Church. And again, talking, uh, I think two people critically injured, maybe a dozen total injured, and unfortunately one person killed because of this this morning. And again, the investigation, of course, uh, hopefully will reveal the exact cause of this. But we, we do know uh, that the snow, and you look at the flags, there, there it has been wind in the area. Again, uh, we're not engineers. We don't know how much wind these can take or, or, or what it is. But we did know that there was some wind, and I'm sure that the investigators, you would, you would hope, would look into that factor as well. And then plus, this is Lower Manhattan Financial District. When you have those tall buildings and a windy day, you can have some areas where there's no wind, other areas where the wind is uh, magnitude and amplified because uh, of just the effect of kind of squeezing strong winds through a narrow tube. It's going to accelerate that. And we, again, we don't know if that's a factor, but all things that come to mind, especially here at the Weather Channel, when we look at a horrible uh, disaster like that, and uh, weather could definitely have been a factor. We'll check in with you throughout the day as we learn more. But right now, we're dealing with what's also falling from the sky there is the snow. You saw that in the pictures there, uh, Dr. Postel, but we're seeing the back edge of snow getting close to New York. But look at that rain snow line. It's what, 37 in Martha's Vineyard and what, 33 in Boston? Oh, uh, that rain snow line is a pest because if you're trying to forecast for parts of uh, the Cape, this is going to be a real trick because, you know, if you end up with mostly rain, you almost get nothing. But if you're on the snow side, maybe you get six inches. Just a very short distance could mean a huge difference in the amount of uh, rain or snow you get. Here's the rain Love snow this. line depicted. Isn't this cool? Uh, we oftentimes use this part of the radar uh, returns to show debris flying through the air when right. we're looking for ev evidence of a tornado in progress. But you could also look at it to find the rain snow line. And rain and snow both kind of show up similarly on this and mostly red. So this would be the snow snow area right here. This would be the rain area because the objects on either side are essentially uniformly Uniform, shaped. Right. But where there's a rain snow mix, that's when you get these odd shapes there. And that is exactly what's showing up right in here. The rain snow mix or the rain snow line is right there and it's waffling back and forth. So if you live in Barnstable, you're rain. But if you live over here in Plymouth, maybe even Sandwich or somewhere just up in there, Duxbury, Massachusetts, you're certainly getting all snow. So Talk about like a four or five cool. degree uh, temperature change over maybe yeah. 25 miles. Very cool. All right. Thanks. Take a live look right now at Seaside Heights, New Jersey, another place also dealing with snow, snow sticking to the boardwalk. We'll talk about when this will move out and also another storm for next week after this. An important message from Miso Justice. For decades, many Americans working in the trades were exposed to asbestos without their knowledge. The result, thousands of cases of asbestos-induced mesothelioma. The U.S. Bankruptcy Court has established asbestos trust with $30 billion in initial funding. You may be entitled to financial compensation without ever going to court. If you or someone you know has been diagnosed with mesothelioma, call Meso Justice today. Please call 800-919-6725. Currently in our area, 61 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, chance of a morning shower. Windy with a mix of clouds and sun. High 66. Winds north at 20 to 30 miles per hour. Tonight, cloudy, slight chance of a rain shower. Low 62. 
Saturday, cloudy with occasional rain showers. High, 72. Chance of rain, 60%. Here's our seven-day outlook.